will hear two students, Jacinta and Louis, discussing a holiday they are planning in Queenstown, a tourist center in New Zealand popular with young people. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6 on page 88. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hi, Lewis. It's Jacinta here. Oh, hi, Jacinta. I was just going to call you. I was thinking we ought to do something about accommodation for our trip to Queenstown. Yeah, actually, that's just why I rang you. I've been looking on the internet. There was one place that looked OK called Traveller's Lodge, but when I checked availability for January, when we're planning to go, I found it was fully booked. Right. Well, we'd better do something now, I suppose. Traveller's Lodge is fully booked. So, fully booked has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Hi, Lewis. It's Jacinta here. Oh, hi, Jacinta. I was just going to call you. I was thinking we ought to do something about accommodation for our trip to Queenstown. Yeah, actually, that's just why I rang you. I've been looking on the internet. There was one place that looked OK called Traveller's Lodge. But when I checked availability for January, when we're planning to go, I found it was fully booked. Right. Well, we'd better do something now, I suppose. I've actually got a list up here on the computer. There's one place called Bingley's that looks possible. It's $19.75 a night. That's US dollars. They quote all the prices in US dollars. So that's about 26 or 27 New Zealand dollars. That's OK. That'll be in a dormitory, is it? Yeah, they say eight-bed dorms, and the hostel's right in the town centre, and they've got a cafe. They have theme nights every weekend, whatever that means. Oh, you know, like certain sorts of food and music. And people might wear special clothes like that Egyptian evening we went to last year. Oh, OK. What else? They've got a sun deck area and then all the usual things, internet access and so on. Sounds good. Was there anywhere else? Yeah, a couple more places. There's one called Chalet Lodge, which is just 18 US dollars. That's for a bed in a 12-bed dorm. They do single and family rooms as well. It looks as if it's a bit out of town. Says it's got an alpine setting, a quiet alpine setting. What do you think? Not sure. Oh, but actually it's not far out at all. It says 10 minutes walk from town, so... Oh, and it says it's children friendly. Mm, I'm not so sure about that. What about the third place? Uh, that's called Globetrotters. Let's see. They do private rooms or five-bed dorms for 1850 It's in the centre, just by the lake, and that includes breakfast. Didn't the other two... I don't think so. They didn't mention it, so probably not. Oh, and it says something about a free skydive. Wow. Don't know if I'm all that keen on jumping out of aeroplanes. Oh, actually, what it says is you can win a chance to do a skydive. They give one away every day to one of the guests. Well, if I win it, you can do it. Anyway, do they have room? Yeah, I checked the availability. Shall I go ahead and book there then? Fine.
You now have some time to look at questions 7 to 10 on page 89. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. I was looking at what there is to do too. There are lots of sites offering deals for adventure sports. <laughs> I suppose we have to do a bungee jump. Why? Well, it's Queenstown where they more or less started it as a sport. You can, if you really want to jump off the side of a bridge with an elastic rope tied around your ankles. I'll watch. OK, so what do you want to do? As far as adventure sports go, I was talking to someone who went whitewater rafting there. He said it was really awesome. They drive you up the Shotover River and then you come down on a rubber raft through the whitewater rapids where the river's really narrow and fast and end up going through a tunnel nearly 200 metres long. I think it's quite expensive, though. Oh, I'm on for that if you are. Cool. The other thing you can do is the jet boat ride. That sounded just a lot of noise, though. It's basically just whizzing round on the river on a very fast boat, isn't it? My friend did that as well. He said it was a bit touristy, but worth it. I'll give it a go. You go right up the river canyon. He said the drivers were really skilful, But I don't mind going on my own. But there's lots to do as well as the whole commercial adventure bit. We ought to do some trekking. The scenery round there's amazing. I don't want to miss that. The place to start's Glenorchy, apparently, about 40 minutes drive. That's where lots of the wilderness trails begin. OK. I'll pack my walking boots. I'd better start getting in training. I haven't done anything except sit at my desk for months. Now, is there anything else we need to decide? That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2 on page 90. Section 2. You will hear a local radio program about cycling courses in London. First you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14 on page 90. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. There's been a great deal of interest lately in encouraging people to use bicycles instead of cars as a means of transport. But not everyone is confident about riding a bike at the best of times, let alone in the middle of a city like London. Jack Hayes is a professional trainer who works for a London-based company, City Cyclist which provides cycle training for the public. What exactly do city cyclists do, Jack? Well, our basic purpose is to promote cycling as a sustainable form of transport. We believe the best way to promote cycling is to teach people to use their bikes safely and with confidence. In European countries, people all learn from their parents, and they also learned in school. And when I tell them I teach people to ride bikes, they laugh. They think it's crazy. But here in London, it's completely different. You're approaching the point where a whole generation of people have grown up not being allowed by their parents to cycle 
because it was considered to be getting too dangerous, and so, in turn, they can't teach their children. We believe in realistic training, so if someone wants to use a bike regularly, say to get to work or school, we aim to train them by teaching them to ride on the actual roads they'll use, so they can develop the basic skills they need and build up their confidence that way. At City Cyclist, we believe cycling's for everyone, no matter what age or level of ability or mobility. We do complete beginners and also advanced courses. That's for urban cyclists who want to deal with things like riding in streets with complicated intersections and things like that. We don't promote the use of personal protective equipment for cyclists, and we endorse the policy of the European Cyclists Federation that parents should be allowed to make an informed choice as to whether or not their child wears a helmet. We believe the key to safe cycling is assertiveness, taking your place on the road. This has to be instilled right from the beginning. Assertive road positioning and behaviour is the key to safe cycling in congested urban environments. Some people are surprised that we don't promote the segregation of cyclists from motorised traffic, but we don't think that's practical in all urban environments. Instead, we teach people to use as much road space as they need to travel safely and effectively. You now have some time to look at questions 15 to 20 on page 91. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. Now, as well as courses for individuals, City Cyclist provides a number of services for organisations. For example, we can deliver fun, safe cycle training activities at schools, arranging courses so that the disruption of curriculum time is kept to a minimum. As well as this, in order to promote safe cycling, we have provided training courses for employees and staff of local councils. And we are also increasingly looking at developing training courses in companies in order to help employers work towards green transport plans by helping to increase the number of staff cycling to work. Right, so that's a brief summary of what we do. If any listeners would like to find out more about the organisation, you can have a look at our website. That's City Cyclist. C I ticyclist.co.uk And in order to book lessons, you can either phone us on 020-7562-4028 or do it online. There's an application form on our website and you can just download that and send it in. We charge £27.50 per hour for one-to-one -one lessons plus £6 for each extra person. So you're looking at just £39.50 for a family of three, say. If you've never been on a bike in your life before, we reckon we can get you riding in one hour. And for most people, a course of road training usually takes three hours. But whether you're a parent or a child, an individual or an institution, we'll be happy to discuss your special needs and make a programme just for you. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear a student, Alex, asking his tutor for advice about essay writing. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 21 to 27.
Hi, Alex. Come in. I gather you wanted some help with writing essays. Yes, I'm finding this first term difficult, and I'm worried about the assignments we have to do for January. Well, let me see if I can help. You shouldn't panic about it because essay writing is a very straightforward process, really. What it involves is organizing the information that you want to include. You shouldn't have more than you can easily manage within the word count. Make sure you haven't got too much or anything irrelevant.、Mm -hmm. Uh, you need to look at that and work out what you need and what you don't need before you start, and then you just have to think about how you're going to put forward your argument. Oh, that sounds very straightforward when you put it like that. <laughs> But I'm worried I haven't got the necessary skills for writing an effective essay because English is my second language.、Mm. Well, perhaps you misunderstand the skills you need. You need to be able to analyze your data, and then I would say the skills of interpretation and expressing yourself are important. Perhaps it's this last one that bothers you. But the more essays you write, the more you will develop these skills. Yes. And I don't quite know how to improve at that, though. As you say, I know practice will help,、mm. and I need to make sure I've got everything ready before I start. Yes, what is vital to good essay writing is preparation. So make sure you build in enough time to do the research you need. Are there any other sources I can use to help me with essays? Yes, you should go to the library. And look through the reference section, because there are books that focus on the style we use in academic writing, and those will help you a lot.、Uh, the other thing that you should think about is what happens when you've actually written your essay.、Uh, too many students just complete their work and hand it in, whereas. What you should be doing is making sure that you edit it as thoroughly as possible. Oh yes, that's a good idea. Then I'd pick up any mistakes and also see if it reads logically. Exactly.、Uh, the other thing is, again, what a lot of students do is get their essays back, look at the marks. Then just file it away.、Hmm. They don't realise that if they checked it through and looked at what the tutor had written, then they can learn from their old essays. Yeah, I can see that's a good idea. So, is that okay? You can always come back to me. You now have fifteen seconds to read questions twenty-eight to thirty. Actually,、uh, there were a couple of other things I wanted to ask you about essay writing. Uh huh. I had had a few thoughts of my own about what I should do, such as really taking good notes when I'm reading, because that helps, doesn't it?、Mm, I think it improves your knowledge rather than your actual writing.、Uh, but one tip I can give you is to try and not read too much. Otherwise, you end up including irrelevant material in your essay. Remember to stay on task. Yes, sometimes I have problems interpreting the questions correctly, or the whole question seems overwhelming to me.、Mm. What I try to do is highlight the key parts and divide it into smaller chunks so I can manage it. Well, you might find it useful to break it down even further by making sure you understand all the words perfectly before you start.、Uh, things like assess or comment and such like. Yes, I see. Sometimes, after an objective analysis, the question actually asks you for a subjective opinion. 
but you must remember to support your arguments if that's the case. Mm. Um, one final comment I can make is about using your own words. You must try to do this as far as possible. You're expected to summarise what you've read, not just string together a list of quotations. In fact, you shouldn't have too many. Just use them where it's really important. OK, thanks. Do you read other students' essays when you've finished? No. Why? Is that a good idea? Well, you can confuse each other, so I'd advise against it. But it's up to you. OK. Uh, thanks very much for your time. And your Section 4. You will hear a tutor giving some business students instructions about a finance project. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 31 to 36. OK, can you quieten down, please? Now, today, I'm going to talk to you about your assignment. We've been studying the effects of the exchange rate, so I'm going to give you a project to do on this. Right, can you make some notes while I'm talking? The first thing that I'd like you to do in order to prepare this is to select where you're interested in. I mean, which country, and therefore, which currency you're going to be operating in. OK, now, the purpose of the project is to make money, and I'm hoping some of you will make a significant amount. So, I want you to suppose that you have £100 that you will have to invest purely in the rises and falls of the exchange system. In other words, you'll be trying to predict rates. This is a project that you'll be doing together, but before you work together, you'll have to go off and research what you need to know about the economy of that country and how well it's doing or is expected to do in the near future. You could all make up a little information sheet with your notes on, clearly legible, because then I want you to get together, we can do that next week, and to go round and read about each other's countries. When you see how well or badly each country is doing, I want you to decide what your exchange rate is going to be against all the other currencies. After that is all sorted, what you're going to do is go around the other students and attempt to sell your money to the others. Remember, this will depend on the success of your country's economy and the rate you fixed for your currency. Now, you're not allowed to just swap currencies with each other, but you may wish to buy from the other countries. But you must do a proper transaction. All the way through this, you must keep your accounts properly for each transaction. I'll give you one week to do this, and then we will set a time for the deals to finish, a bit like the stock exchange. And, at that point, I will ask you to calculate how much you have made. Is that clear? You now have 30 seconds to read questions 37 to 40.
Okay, now before you begin that, there are a few things I want you to read up on to prepare. You need to look at the economies of the UK's main trading partners. I don't mean all of them, because that would be over 80, but just the 29 principal ones. There are summaries in the last three books on the book list I've given you. And so that you can practice applying the criteria on assessment I gave you, I'd then like you to focus just on one sector across all the countries. The most common one across every country is farming. But as much agricultural produce is for domestic consumption, I'd like you to look at manufacturing. Then I would like you to do a detailed investigation of one particular aspect. I was going to give you a choice, but I think as we've just started the course, it's better if we all look at the same thing and then we can discuss it in the seminars. So the thing I'd like you all to look at is fluctuations in import prices. Now, you need to do all that before you start the project as it will help you assess the economies of the countries you'll be representing in the project. Don't worry, you've got plenty of time. Exam week is December the 8th, then it's the holidays until January the 6th, so I don't need the project in till February the 5th. Is that okay? Now, any questions on this? Because it is